Okay, so let's discuss um, some statistical tests na pwede natin gamitin in your data analysis sa research. Okay? So last time, we differentiated parametric and non-parametric tests. And then we have also identified the needed na mga analytical test depende sa ano sa variables natin sa ating study so depende kung one sample or two samples or if na fulfill ang mga parametric assumptions then your test will fall on this part of the diagram and then this one is for hypothesis testing ha and then if hindi na fulfill yung mga parametric assumptions then the test will will be here sa non parametric test so um let us ano let us clarify the difference between the z test and the t test kasi pareho silang uh, ginagamit to test the hypothesis especially if um, your statement of the problem is asking about the difference, the significant difference of your variables. Mm -hmm. So please look at your statement statement of the problem. If meron siya dyan, question na is there a significant difference? Then, um, kung meron ganyan, then maybe ang inyong analysis will be Z-test, pwede ding t-test. So, how are you going to know kung z-test or t-test siya? So, you ask first this question, do you know the population standard deviation? So, if you know the population standard deviation, if it's yes and the sample is above 30, meaning you have a lot of samples na makolek, more than 30, then that's the time you use the z-test. But if it's below 30, then you are going to use t-test in analyzing your data. However, um, most of our study actually, hindi natin alam yung characteristics ng ating population and hindi natin alam yung standard deviation ng ating population. Therefore, uh, most of the studies use t-test in analyzing the data for testing hypothesis and to know the difference of the variables. So if ano class um if gusto niyo mag-decide, gusto niyo malaman kung anong statistical test ang appropriate sa inyong study, please refer to the graph on or the the chart on the screen. You just follow the arrows. So um ang una niyo talagang i-ask is the type of data. So if it's continuous, when you say continuous, it's interval or ratio. May ano ka, may, may numerical value ka talaga dito na true numerical value. Then dito ka papunta sa chart. But if your data is discrete or categorical, when you say categorical, it will be nominal, meaning it will just be demographic profile, mga categorical na mga data, mga sex, um, what else do you ask? Age, kana mga ingana lang ang inihang data, and at the same time, ordinal data, katong na ay ranking, just like the use of um, Likert scale, then you will be using the chi-square. So chi-square test can be used for um, one and two samples and chi-square test can be used in testing the difference at the same time testing the association. So pwede siyang mag-answer ng question na is there a significant difference or is there a significant relationship or association. So muna siya ang gamit sa Chi square. Pero chi square is under the non parametric test because it cannot fulfill parametric assumptions um, like the data. The data is not continuous or is not in an uh, interval na form. So kung dirita sa interval na form, most of your data will fall here sa interval na form or sa ratio or continuous. Then 
um, the next thing you will do is to look at your statement of the problem if ang iyahang gina-ask is, is there a significant relationship or is there a significant difference? Um, so if significant relationship class, you have to ask this, this question, do you have a true independent um, variable? So if it's, if it is available in your study, meron kayong independent variable na totoo, then that uh, you will be using regression analysis. But if wala, when you say true independent variable, yung mga demographic profile kasi, though we can consider them as our independent variable sa study, pero hindi kasi siya true independent variable kasi remember that demographic profiles are um, categorical by nature. So, mauna siya nga mag-fall siya here sa no. So, ang, ano, ang gagawin dyan, if your independent variables are just the demographic profile, please look at your ano, conceptual framework. Again, please look at your conceptual framework. Ano yung nakalagay dyan na independent variable? If it is just the demographic profile, then you don't have a true independent variable. So you will be using correlation analysis and then uh, you will be deciding if it's parametric or non-parametric. So for, for the parametric assumptions, take note, uh, you have to fulfill this before you can use the Pearson's R correlation. So dapat uh, your samples uh, should be independent and um, unbiased. And then it should be normally distributed. Later, I will teach you, uh, kahit hindi na kayo mag-graph, hindi na kayo mag-graph, uh, you will determine if your data is normally distributed or not. And at the same time, uh, we will determine if you have equal variances sa inyong variables. So, determine natin yan, uh, yung mga parametric assumptions na yan, and we can conclude na your data are normally distributed and yes, you can really use the Pearson's R correlation. But if ever uh, yung mga data nyo hindi normally distributed and merong mga violations on the parametric assumptions, then you will be using the Spearman's rank correlation. Okay? So that's for the testing of the relationship. Okay? So please again review your statement statement of the problem if you have question na is there a significant relationship. So automatically when you look at your um, research design you have to see there that your that your research is a correlational research before ka gumamit ng mga test na ito. Now, uh, most of the study actually is ano, hypothesis testing and then um, ang tinitest is the difference between the variables. Kaya medyo mahaba dito na side kasi uh, marami tayong i-consider in testing the difference. So now uh, for the quantitative na mga researches, please look at your statement of the problem if meron dyang question na is there a significant difference okay so if you are just asking for the difference between variances so meron tayong mga tests for equal variances we have the fmax test the brown and smith test and the bartlett's test um ano lang ito nag-ask na kung equal ba yung variance or Hindi. And since ginagamit natin siya to know if the variances are equal, then ginagamit natin siya to test if na nasunod ba yung mga parametric assumption. So kung nakita natin sa <coughs> using this test na na equal naman yung variances, then confirmed na you will be using parametric test in testing the difference. So if class, you are testing the difference ng mga means mo, like is there a significant difference in the mean score uh, 
a mean blood glucose level of the subjects. Mga ingana na question. So you are you are ano you are testing the difference between means sa iyong mga groupings. So the next thing that you will ask is how many treatment groups do you have? Okay? So example na akay duha ka grupo. Duha ka grupo lang like positive and negative. So the next, uh, dito ka papunta sa two groups and then please identify first if the parametric assumptions are satisfied. Take note of the parametric assumptions here and at the top. Now kung uh, yes, parametric assumptions are satisfied, then you use the students pair t-test or Sorry, it's students and paired t-test and the paired t-test. So this morning, we will concentrate first sa students and paired t-test and the paired t-test. Okay? So this one. And then, if hindi na uh, satisfy yung mga parametric assumptions and you cannot transform your data, then you will be using the non-parametric test. Uh, it will be either man with me or the Wilcoxon rank sums test. So ano to siya mga <clears throat> non-parametric equivalent ng t-test, either the student or the paired t-test. Ito yung mga non-parametric equivalent. Okay? So please look at your statement of the problem again if you have two groups only in uh, testing the difference. Now if you have more than two groups, more than two groups, so dito tayo. And then, you will be also asking um, if the parametric assumptions are satisfied. So, if na-satisfy naman yung ating parametric assumptions, that's the time you use the ANOVA or the analysis of variance. Okay? So, that's ANOVA ha if you have uh, more than two groups. Example, sa mga quantitative na experimental study, like you have your positive control, the negative control, and your treatment group. So you have three groups already there. And then you are asking, is there a significant difference sa mean ng three groups mo? Then if the parametric assumptions are satisfied, then you have to use ANOVA. And um, after using ANOVA, the result is merong significant difference between the three groups. Again, if merong significant difference between the three groups after testing the ANOVA, you have to do post hoc test. So either the Tukis or the Bonferronis. Sa post hoc test, dito mo malalaman among the three groups, ano yung naiba. Kasi meron mang significant difference. So, ma-answer natin dyan after doing the post hoc test, how do they differ from each other? Okay? <clears throat> However, class, if um, parametric assumptions are not satisfied for more than two groups na testing and you cannot transform your data, uh, then the pa non-parametric equivalent for ANOVA is the Kruskal Wallis test. Okay? And just like <clears throat> the ANOVA, if you find out that there is a significant difference between the means of your groupings, then you do the DANS test. It's just like a post hoc test wherein you will determine how the groups differ from each other. Okay? Questions so far about the testings? You should know this by heart uh, para pag dating sa final defense. If you are asked what um, statistical test is suitable for your research, then ma-answer niyo siya correctly. Okay? And then if you are asked why, for example, you answered ANOVA, um, then may follow-up question dun na siya na why. So you have to explain why you used ANOVA in ano, analyzing your data. So, kailangan niya siya uh, malaman. Questions? Sa'yo, Kate, na nag-story ag statistics, no? Actually, humanataan niya sa atong stat, pero kailangan ta mag-review. Um, and then, i-apply kasi natin siya sa inyong research. Okay? Wala? Wala pang utana? So, let's move on. Let's concentrate sa ato ang t-test. So let's have our t-test first 
for independent samples. Again, this is the t-test for independent samples. So when are we going to use this test? This is used to determine the significance of the difference between the two means. Again, you Pag t-test, duha lang dapat ka-grouping. So meaning na kay duha ka-means, then din ha. And this is useful when samples are less than 30. So gamay lang ang imuhang sample and the standard deviation is unknown. Especially the standard deviation of the population. Kasi if you have more than 30 and then you know the standard deviation of the population, then you have to use the z-test. Okay, so what are the assumptions to be met before um, before ka maka-conclude na you really need to use this test? So these are the assumptions. First, since t-test is a parametric test, then data should be normally distributed. And the levels of measurement, especially of your dependent variable, should be in interval or ratio scale. And most of the time, your samples na ginagamit are drawn for, from different populations. Okay? That's the t-test for independent samples or pwede din siya tawaging students and paired t-test. Parehas lang yun. Independent sample sila class. Um, you have one group, uh, you have two groups that are not related to each other. So like, you give... Uh, one intervention to one group and then you give um, different intervention to another group. Muna sila unrelated or unpaired. Now, if you don't have the software, you have to do the manual computation. So please review kasi I have done discussing this sa inyong ano, sa inyong statistics. Itong pag-compute manually ng t-test. So this will be our formula for our t-test wherein we have here x1 minus x2 divided by the square root of SS1 plus SS2 divided by N1 plus N2 minus 2. And then i-multiply natin siya sa 1 over N1 plus 1 over N2. So, unsa ni sila meaning ani? X1 refers to the mean of your group 1. And X2 refers to the mean of your group 2. SS1 is the sum of squares ng group 1. And SS2 is for the sum of squares ng group 2. And then N1 is for the sample size of group 1. And N2 is the sample size ng ating group 2. So, again, you use this formula if you don't have the software and then you have to do the manual computation. Okay? So what is our decision rule here? Kasi after testing, you have to um, decide and make a conclusion. Wait. Low but Wait. Aha. Okay, <clears throat> let's continue. So our decision rule here, class, take note, you have to reject your null hypothesis if the p-value associated with the computed p-value is less than 0 0.05. Actually, sa mga experimental research, we are using the level of significance na 0 0.01. But um, for some reason, since this is just a student research, hindi tayo masyadong strict with the level of significance, uh, ginagamit natin is 0 0.05. That's the same thing with social na social sciences na mga studies, aning mga quantitative research na nagakandak o survey. Uh, you will be using the level of significance na 0 0.05. And then, syempre, since 0 0.05 ang level of significance, then 
our reference value here is 0 0.05. So if ang na-compute na p-value after the testing is less than 0 0.05, then you have to reject your null hypothesis. Okay? Meaning, Ana, i-accept ni mo ang imuhang alternative hypothesis. I hope you can still remember the difference between the null and the alternative. The null is um, written in negative form and the alternative is written sa positive na form. So, for example, there is no significant difference between the blood glucose lowering of the positive, the negative, and the treatment group. So since na I present sa word na no, then it's on the negative side. It's a null hypothesis. And if your computed p-value is less than the 0 0.05, then you have to reject that null hypothesis, which means na merong difference. Ay, tatlo na itong yung dapat doha lang ka group na. So example, positive lang treatment group. So, um... You have to reject your null hypothesis class, which means na merong significant difference ang iyong dalawang grupo. Okay? So do not, this is do not, just, just disregard that. And do not reject the null hypothesis or you have to accept the null hypothesis if the p-value is greater than 0 0.05. Okay? That's our decision rule um let's disregard this example first this is the table that we use for the p test class um ginagamit natin ito if you do manual computation again if wala kayong software dyan you have to do manual computation and since during the manual computation we cannot determine the p value then we will be going to use the p score and ito yung table na ating gagamitin. So it's either one tail or two tail test and depende sa level of significance. So most of the time we will be using the two tail test kasi yung ating mga mga hypothesis is non-directional. Wala siyang direction, wala siyang word na greater than, lesser than. Nag-ask lang tayo kung meron bang difference or wala. So mostly P test, I sorry, two tail test. And most of the time, we use here <clears throat> the 0 0.05 level of significance. And then we will just compute for the difference. Ano lang ni siya? Sample size minus 1 kung isa ka grupo. Pero sample size, sample size sa group 1 plus sample size sa group 2 minus 2 kung sa um, two groups. Okay. But uh, let's have this example. Let's disregard first the example sa uh, ano, katong kagaina. So this one first. A study was conducted by a group of fourth-year pharmacy students in XXX school to determine the level of male and female community pharmacist awareness on antimicrobial dispensing. So a standardized survey questionnaire was adapted from international research in 1 to 5 Likert scale. So this is a study. Um, this one is a quantitative study. Um, and the study is about determining the level of awareness of community pharmacists about antimicrobial dispensing. So questionnaire ang ginamit with uh, the use of the Likert scale. So basig mangota na mo ma, magtitas ta din hi nga Likert scale mani ang gigamit. Yes, Likert scale ang gigamit. It is supposedly ordinal na data. Pero class, when you have series of questions, uh, most of the time we will get the mean for that. So pag ang katong mga scores nila sa Likert scale is gikuha ni mo ang mean um ano na siya mahulog na siya nga interval na scale so you can use the t test now so when you make your conceptual framework for this kind of study the independent variable here level and level of male and female man so the sex will be the independent variable so either male or female and the dependent variable is their level uh, kulang lang siya but it's level of awareness sa antimicrobial 
dispensing. And then if we look at the statement of the problem, this will be most likely the statement of the problem of the research. So what is the level of awareness on antimicrobial dispensing of female community pharmacists? And then number two, what is the level of awareness on antimicrobial dispensing of male community pharmacists? And syempre, number three, is there a significant difference in the level of awareness on antimicrobial dispensing between male and female? Between, kulang din na siya. Male and female community pharmacists. So, money mostly ang mga question for that kind of study. So, for the research design, um, this one is a descriptive comparative na research. So, nga nung nahimo siya descriptive comparative na research. This is non-experimental but it's quantitative, quantitative, descriptive, and comparative. So, when we look at questions number one and number two, it is just asking what is the level. So, basically, basically uh, you will be you will just use descriptive statistics here. So mo na nga, first descriptive ang imuhang research design kasi number one and number two only ask for um, descriptive na mga data. So you will just have the mean here and pwede na mangita po daw standard deviation. But sa number three, you are comparing now. So, mo na nga comparative imuhang design. And since you are comparing now, uh, you will be using inferential statistics here. And since we only have two groups, male and female, then most likely you will be using the p-test. Okay? So, we, uh, please prepare your software there because we will be testing this, okay? But before that, before uh, we will really finalize na maggamit ta og t-test ane, take note, t-test is a parametric test. So, you have to fulfill the following parametric assumptions. So, first, the normality of the distribution. Kailangan na to um, i-determine if our... Um, data are normally distributed and then there will be equality of variance kasi dapat equal yung variance ng group 1 and group 2. And then sa number 1 and number 2 later, um, without, doing, uh, without making a graph, we can determine whether normal ang distribution natin and whether equal ang ato ang variance. And then independence of the observation. Uh, as, you as you can see, independent naman kasi iba naman yung female, iba naman yung male. So they are not related with each other. And then before doing a t-test, please look at the scores. Please look at the scores ng inyong survey or yung inyong experiment if meron bang presence ng outliers. So when you say outliers, they are extreme scores na very different, very far away from the normal scores nga makita ni mo sa imuhang result. And then there should be random sampling here. Random sampling kasi mostly ang ginagamit natin kapag ka nagpaparametric test tayo. And then, ang ating independent, independent variable is in group. So, for example, male, female, that is the sex. And then, ang iba katong mga groups na to, like sa, sa experimental na study, na mga treatment group, positive control group, and the negative control group. And take note that the dependent variable should be at least an in, uh, sa interval na scale. Okay? So, wait lang ha. I'll be sending you sa chat a file. Actually, uh, meron ako dito ang parang result. Sample results of the ano, kanang study na ako ang i-present sa inyo ha. So, we will be using the JASP software and wait lang. Masunod po. Ayan. Ayan. Please download that. I hope you can see it sa chat ha. Please, please, ano, thumbs up kung nadawat na. Okay? 
and kung na ano kung na download na so duha na siya ka klase nga file class um okay i hope na download na ha okay so duha na siya ka klase nga file the first one is in excel the format and then the other one is CSV na format. Pero parehas lang na siya ugunod. Nakuha, parehas lang na siya ugunod. Result na siya sa survey conducted sa male and female pharmacists um, regarding the level of their awareness sa antimicrobial dispensing. So nga nung duha ako ang gisend. Kasi... Um, you can use also Excel in analyzing or in doing t-test. But if you are going to use the JASP software, the JASP software cannot, ano, dili na niya ma-read ang Excel na format. So, kailangan sa ni mo na siya i-convert before ka, wait lang, before na niya ma-read, i-convert ni mo siya sa CSV na format. Let me open mine first. This one is in CSV. Wait, wait. So I will teach you how to convert the file in CSV format para um, ma-read siya sa ito ang JASP software. Na-download na class. Na-download na ang file akong gisend sa chat. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Very good. Um, wait, this one. So this one, ang unod ana niya. Ay, yeah, yeah. Oh, mali, 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 mali akong gisan. Nga nung track na yun. Akad and TVL. Wait. Pataka lang kong send. Sorry, sorry. Iba pala ang laman ng isa kong data. Anyway, anyway. Uh, please disregard the Excel na format kay. Um, namali na kong butang ang uh, track. But anyway, wait lang ha. Okay. So, parehas na sila actually ugunod na mali lang akong butang ang track. Ang track should be male or female. Pero first, let me teach you how to convert a file to CSV. Ang inyuhang mga nag-gather na data, inyuha siyang i-encode sa Excel. So, mahimo na siya Excel format niya. Pero if you want to use the JASP software, delete ni siya ma-read sa JASP software, ang Excel na format. So, you have to convert it to CSV. So, how do you convert? So, pindutun lang ninyo ng file din he. And then, save as. Okay. And then, for example, I'll be saving that one sa ako alang documents. And take note na ang file niya, type niya diri kay Excel workbook. So, again, ang Excel class, dili siya ma-read sa ato ang JASP software. So, kailangan nato siya i-convert sa CSV. Pangitaon lang ninyo class ang CSV din he. So, this one. And ang comma delimited. CSV format, this one. Comma delimited. And then, click save. Mahimo na na siya o CSV format and pwede na na siya i-read sa ato ang JASP software. Nasundan... Nasundan wala. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, we will just use the CSV format na ako ang gisend. Okay? Again, we will just use the CSV format na ako ang gisend. Duha mag na akong gisend. So, please look at the file if asa din ha ang CSV format. And then, gamito na to siya in analyzing our data. So, I'll be sharing to you now the screen for the JASP software. Pakitaan? 
just software this is how it looks like parehas tao gibitan aw okay so how are we going to use this software kani akong itudlo sa inyo ha kay last time sa atong statistics akong gitudlo sa inyo ha SPSS uh though you know how to use this SPSS na but our problem sa research is we don't have a license for SPSS and then we cannot declare it sa ato ang um, research kasi magkaroon tag problem with the intellectual property with lock Okay. Again, sorry. Sarap ang katingon kiko. Again, we cannot use the SPSS ha kasi may problem tayo with the intellectual property niyan. So how do we use the JASP software? Kung nakita ninyo ng tulo dere kabuok na murag bar, pindutun na ninyo, and then open, and then open the file nga ato ang i-analyze. So you have to know asan ninyo to siya gisave. So for example, ako... Asa na ko to siya gisave? There is a research capability building. And then, in this independent sample data set. Kung nakita ninyo, daghan kong file there, no? Pero puros na siya CSB. Ang, ang tanang files na ko nga naka-Excel workbook, dili na siya ma-detect sa just software. Okay? So, mauni siya, independent sample data set. Click open. And ma-import na ang atuang data sa atuang just software. Again, ma-import na na siya. Now, when you encode your data sa Excel class, before ninyo siya i-convert sa CSV, make sure nga ang first column will be the groupings. So, aware and the track. Or male or female. Ako, kay track lang akong ibutang ha. Pero pwede po sex in yung hang ibutang. And then, mo ni ilang mga scores sa level of awareness. Okay? Um, ang first column, butangan gin na ninyo siya o name sa groupings. Kay pag-import ninyo ana sa just software, pag wala siya'y label sa first, first nga column, uh, ang first column nga score, himuuna niya label diri sa ano sa, sa JASP software. So, delete na to siya ma-appeal sa pag-compute kaya nahimo na siyang label. Okay? So, Mona, it is very important. Wait lang. Um, Mona siya class nga sa JASP software, ay sa, sa Excel na workbook, take note of this, the first column or the first row, row here, na aji pangalan. Para, para pag uh, open na to sa JASP software, Um, dili niya mahilab taning first nga data. Okay? Kaya kung tanggalun ni mo ni Dinhi, unya, mauni ang first row or first column niya. Mauni siya ang mahimong um, label sa imuhang data. Muna ako ang ginamin. So, asa na to? Ato ang just software. Okay. Now, uh, please look at this. Kung pinduto ninyo ni, makita ninyo kung unsang klaseng data. So, for this, this one is actually a scale data interval. Though, this one is sagot nila sa Likert scale. Pero since dikuha na na ko ang mean, mahimo na na siya o interval na data. Okay? So, sa just software, giisa na ang interval o ang um, ratio. And then, take note of the track. The track is nominal. Kasi di ba nominal, i-click ninyo nominal. Make sure nga maklik ang nominal. Um, kasi remember, ang male and female are demographic profiles. Wala sila'y um, numerical value. So muna ang nakabutang lang male, female, male, female. Ana lang. Wala'y numerical value. But you have to set that this type of data, pinduton lang ninyo ng bilog-bilog din ha. Nominal na siya. Now, unsa itong gamiton ani? 'Di ba? Our question is is there a significant difference between the two groups, the male and the female uh, in terms of the level of awareness sa antimicrobial dispensing. So kailangan nato mo gamit og independent t-test. So sa taas class you will see there the t-test. Click that and then remember that these are independent samples. So click independent sample. T-test. And then you will see um, 
on your screen, yung ani ang iyahang makuha. Okay? So, ang variables class, diri ni mo ibutang imuhang dependent variable. So, dependent variable ni mo is imuhang awareness. Remember? Money ang ato ang scores. So, diha ni mo siya ibutang sa aware. And then, ang track will be your independent variable. So, just software, ang independent variable is your grouping variable. So, imuha po na siyang i-click going here. Okay? So, wait lang. Kaya nag-load pa siya. Automatic class, hatagan ka niya o table. So, like, sa awareness, the T-score here, mag-compute siya dahil nag-T-score, it's negative 0.033. And then, this one is the difference kasi we have a total of 40 for both group 1, group 1 and 2. So, minus 2, that's 38. And take note, muhatag siya da yun o p-value. Okay? So, kung gusto na ito, mabalan po ang, ma-answer po ang 1 and 2 nga question. Di ba ang 1 o 2 nga question sa statement of the problem kay what is the level of awareness of the male and female? You just have to click this one, descriptives, para tagaan ka niya o mean. Okay? And the standard deviation. Kasi mean man ang imuhang kailangan ng standard deviation sa imuhang questions number 1 and 2. Okay? Again, this is for the descriptives. So mabalan ni mo nga ang female. Ang mean sa ilahang level of awareness is 4.170. And for, for male, the mean for their level of awareness is 4.175. Okay? So take note, naka... naka ano na nidaan ng group 1 is not equal to group 2. That means your null hypothesis is there is no significance between group 1 and group 2. And mo niya kung ginaingon class nga, let's check if tama ang atong assumption nga para metric test jo dapat atong gamitin sa data. So sa just software, naan na siya assumption tests, assumption checks. You just have to click it para mahatagan ka sa value. So, i-click ni mo ang normality. It will give you assumption checks there. And then, di ba, uh, it should be both normality of the distribution and equality of variance. So, dugangan ka niya ana o table. So, mana siya, complete na dayon ang imuhang table na needed ni mo to answer your statement of the problem. So, what is good with this software is pwede ni mo ni siya kapihon. Okay? Like this, copy, and then i-paste na lang ni mo dito sa imuhang document or sa imuhang word. Dili parehas sa, ano, uban nga software o sa manumano nga ikaw pa ang mubuhat o table, and then imuhang, ibutang dito ang imuhang data. So, kani ang table, pwede na ni mo diretso kapihon, ibutang ni mo, i-copy-paste ni mo dito sa imuhang um, document. Okay. So kung naana ni na mga table, say sunod, syempre mag-analyze ta. So mag-analyze na ta kay unsa may meaning anang mga numbers din ha. So kani sa descriptive, so wala ni siya problema kay you just have to paste this as answer sa imuhang question number one o question number two. Okay? Um nagsunod ba ang tanan? Nakuha. Anyway, I'll, I'll give you the recording para pwede ninyo siya i-review. So, balik na dito sa ako ang PowerPoint presentation. Kaya copy-paste na po itong result dere. Okay? Ay. So, mo nitong ato ang nakita nga result sa just software, di ba? So, this is how you analyze it. So, we need the p-value class. Again, we need the p-value here. Um, para sa mga nagmano-mano o computation, mauni inyo ang makuha ang t-score. And para ma-analyze ni siya, kailangan ninyo ng table na ni. Okay? Pero um, sa mga nagamit o software, pwede na nga ang p-value ato ang gamiton. So how are you going? What is our decision rule here? A p-value of less than or equal to 0.5 
zero five means that the difference is significant, de ba? Irreject ni mo ang imuhang null hypothesis. So, so kung less than zero point zero five, the difference is significant for the two groups. Now, looking at the p value, it's zero point nine seven four, meaning it's greater greater than uh, the zero point zero five. So, unsay meaning ana kung greater than meaning there is no significant difference okay so we have to accept our null hypothesis kaida p value is greater than 0 0.05 okay so what's the meaning ana meaning walay significant difference ang level of awareness sa mga babae o lalaki nga pharmacist in terms of antimicrobial <clears throat> dispensing. That's how you analyze and that's how you interpret the result of the t-test. Okay? So sa assumption checks naman, um, this one is for the normality. We call it shapiro Wilk test. Um, take note, how are we going to to analyze this or interpret these values. So a p-value sa normality testing na higher than 0.05 means that the distribution of the data set is normal. So normal kung more than 0.05 ang p-value for the normality check. So for female, it's 0.318. For male, it's 0.390. So both of them are greater than 0 0.05, which means our data na na-collect for male and female are normally distributed. Okay? Bisag wala ta nag-graph. Bisag di na to makita ang bell shape. Pero using this um, test, makita na to nga normally distributed ang ato ang data. And then for the test of equality of variances, we call it the Levin's test. Um, a p-value of higher than 0 0.05 also means that the variance of the data set is homogeneous, meaning equal daw ang variance if the p-value is greater than 0 0.05. Zero 0.05. And the p-value for the test of equality of variance is 0 0.498, which is really higher than 0 0.05, meaning the, the variances here are equal. Meaning, any class, since normally distributed itong data, and then the variances are equal, tama class nga parametric test ato ang gamiton, and that is the t-test. So, mo niya itong ginahimo even without graphing. So, again, ha, do not forget, pag nag, ano ka, nag manual ka o compute, kay wala kay software, then this will be our decision rule. If the computed t is greater than the t sa table, then you have to reject your null hypothesis. Okay? So, that is for the unfair t-test or independent sample t-test. Question so, so far, it's already 8.29. Wala. So, um, next meeting, I might give a quiz. I might, I might give a quiz next meeting. So, you have to know this by heart. Kung unsaun siya. Ang, ang important thing, Ani, is you know how to interpret these values. Okay? Uh, merong post hoc kapag ka you are doing ANOVA. Okay? Pero, pero kasi this one is t-test, so no need to do the post hoc. Kasi sa t-test, malalaman mo na agad how do they differ from each other. Kani wala man yung significant difference. So you don't do, you don't do post hoc activities bas or test if wala sila'y difference. So, na'y post hoc sa ANOVA. Okay? Sa ANOVA lang talaga post hoc. Sa t-test, wala. Kasi we are just comparing two, two means for t-test. So, automatic we can see sa values kung which is higher and which is lower. Pag abot mang good sa ANOVA, since we are comparing the three, three or more groups, then we really need to know how do they, they differ. That's the time we use the post hoc. Okay? 
Anything else before tayo mag-end? Wala. Wala, so... Wala na mo. <laughs> I'll be sending the recording later. <laughs>